Hi there, can you help me find a pair of comfortable slippers for indoors? Absolutely. We have a great selection of slippers to choose from. Have you considered flip-flops as well? They're more suitable for outdoor use. Oh, I didn't know that. What's the difference between slippers and flip-flops? Well, slippers are typically made with soft materials like faux fur or fleece with a closed toe and heel design. They're perfect for keeping your feet warm and cozy during the colder seasons. Ah, uh, that makes sense. And how about flip-flops? Flip-flops have an open toe design and are usually made with rubber or foam soles. They're perfect for wearing to the beach or around the pool during warmer seasons. Oh, I see now. So, I should get a pair of slippers for indoor use and flip-flops for outdoor use, right? Yes, that's right. And lucky for you, we have a wide variety of both styles available in many colors and sizes. Great. Thanks for your help. I'll take a look around and pick out a few pairs. No problem. Let me know if you have any questions or if you need help finding anything specific. Will do. Thanks again. You're welcome. Have a great day. Hey B, have you heard about the new fitness application that we're working on? It's going to be the talk of the town. Of course, hey. I'm actually really excited to work on this project with you. We get to combine our skills to create something that can help people improve their health. Definitely. And as a software engineer, I think we should focus on creating a seamless experience for users to track their progress and provide personalized fitness recommendations. What do you think, B? As a UI designer, I completely agree with you, A. We can create a clean and easy-to-use interface that will keep our users engaged and motivated to keep coming back. Awesome. We could also incorporate some fun elements like challenges and rewards to make it feel like a game. I love that idea, A. We can definitely add some animated graphics and fun colors to make the whole experience more visually appealing. And what about using data and analytics to help users understand their progress and areas of improvement? Brilliant, A. We could create insightful graphs and charts that show users their progress in real time. It can even provide some valuable health tips on how to improve their overall lifestyle. This is why we make a great team, B. I can't wait to see the final product and make a positive impact on people's lives. Same here, A. Let's keep up the energy and create a fun and useful fitness app that everyone can use. Good morning, B. How's business today? Good morning, A. It's been steady so far. How about you? Not bad. I'm trying to figure out how to sell more of my fresh fruits. Well, you could try offering samples to customers. People love free stuff. That's a great idea. I'll have to bring some samples next time. Another thing that works for me is packaging people are more likely to buy if it's already put together in a convenient way. Hmm, I see what you mean. What kind of packaging do you use? I put together small baskets or bags of assorted fruits, or sometimes I make fruit kebabs. It's all about convenience and appeal. That's really helpful. Thanks for the tips. I'll have to give it a try. No problem. Happy to help. And I have to say, your fruits always look so fresh and healthy. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you. Your display always looks so inviting. Thank you as well. It's all about presentation, right? Definitely. It's amazing how much difference it can make. Agreed. Well, good luck with your sales, and let me know how the samples and packaging work out. I will, thanks again. Have a great day. Hey B, how are you doing today? I heard that we have to design an e-commerce website, excited much? Hey A, I'm doing great. And yes, super thrilled to get started with this project. What are our goals for this website? First, we need to ensure that it's user-friendly and provides a smooth shopping experience. Secondly, it should have a visually appealing design that aligns with our brand image. Got it. So, what do you suggest we should do with the homepage? I think we should have a clear and prominent call to action, encouraging users to browse and shop our products. We could also include some exciting deals and offers. That's a great idea. And what about the product page? Any thoughts? We should have high-quality product images, along with detailed descriptions, features, and specifications. We can also include reviews and ratings from satisfied customers. Absolutely. I agree with you on that. Moving on, what about the checkout process? The checkout process should be simple and hassle-free. We could offer a guest checkout option or include multiple payment gateways for user convenience. Yes, making the checkout process quick and easy can greatly improve our chances of converting visitors into customers. What do you think about social media integration? 
I think we should include social media integration to enable users to share their favorite products on their social media handles. It can also help increase engagement and drive traffic to our website. Right. Social media can be a powerful tool to reach out to a massive audience. How do you plan to implement responsive web design? We should design the website using responsive web design techniques, ensuring that it adapts well to different screen sizes, including mobile and tablet devices. I couldn't agree more. In this age of technology, it's essential to have a website that is optimized for different devices. What's your take on including an FAQ section? We should definitely have an FAQ section to address any frequently asked questions and provide answers that users might have about our products, shipping, and returns. Yes, an FAQ section can be incredibly helpful in enhancing the user experience and reducing customer service queries. What about building an email list? It's a great idea to include an option for users to subscribe to our email list, where we can send them updates about new products, promotions, and exclusive offers. Absolutely necessary. Email marketing can be very effective in keeping our customers engaged and informed. How do you plan to incorporate user testing into the process? We should conduct user testing by inviting a group of users to test the website and provide feedback. This can help identify any usability issues or areas for improvement. Yes, user testing can greatly help us identify potential issues and ensure that we're meeting user expectations. Looks like we're on the same page, A. Eh? Definitely, B. I'm confident that with our expertise, we can create a spectacular online shopping experience for our customers. Absolutely. Let's get started and build a website that customers will love to browse and shop. Hi, have you tried Squid before? Yes, I have. I think it's quite delicious. How about you? Actually, I haven't tried it yet. What's your favorite way of cooking it? I prefer it grilled or fried. The texture and flavor are really nice when it's cooked that way. That sounds interesting. I think I might try it out soon. You definitely should. It's a great source of protein and there are so many different ways to cook it. What about the taste? Is it a bit chewy like octopus? Yes, it can be a little chewy, but not as much as octopus. It has a slightly sweet and savory flavor. I see. I'm looking forward to trying it now. Do you have any recommended restaurants that serve good squid dishes? Yes, there's a Japanese restaurant downtown that serves amazing squid dishes. I highly recommend trying their tempura squid. Oh, that sounds delicious. Thank you for the recommendation. No problem. Let me know how you like it. Will do. Thanks again. You're welcome. Enjoy your squid dish. Hey B, good to see you. What have you been up to since we last saw each other? Not much, just working on some cloud computing projects for different clients. How about you? Oh, same old, same old. Crunching numbers and analyzing data. Speaking of which, I've been having some trouble processing large data sets efficiently. Do you have any suggestions? Yes, definitely. The cloud would be a perfect tool for handling big data. Really? How so? With cloud computing, you can easily scale up or down depending on the size of the data set, and you don't even need to worry about data storage or processing power. That sounds pretty amazing. But what about data security? Cloud providers typically have tight security measures in place to protect their clients' data. Plus, you can always encrypt your data to make it even more secure. Ah, uh, I see. It sounds like there are a lot of benefits to cloud computing. Are there any downsides? Well, there are always trade-offs. Cloud computing can be more expensive than on-premises solutions, especially if you have a lot of data. But it's usually worth it in terms of convenience and scalability. That's a good point. Thanks for explaining all of this to me, B. I think I'm going to look into using the cloud for my data processing needs. No problem. Happy to help. And hey, let me know if you need any assistance with that. I'm always happy to work on new cloud projects. Will do. Thanks again. So, how's your food? Pretty good, actually. I always love trying new restaurants in the area. How about you? Yeah, it's not bad. The service is a little slow, though. Ah, well, that's the price we pay for trying new places, right? Hey, B, have you heard about ISO 27001 Information Security Risk Management? Oh, yeah, I've heard about it. It's all about managing information security risks, right? That's right. It's a standard that helps organizations keep their data safe from cyber attacks. Wow, that sounds like a pretty important standard. Do you think I should learn more about it? Definitely. It's a great way to protect information assets and safeguard sensitive data. 
But do you think it's a fun topic to learn about? I don't want to fall asleep studying it. Of course it is. Think about it like a puzzle game. You need to find the weak spots and fix them before the cybercriminals can find them. Ah, uh, I see what you mean. It's like a game of hide and seek but with important data and cybercriminals trying to find it. Exactly. And the best part is, once you master the game, you get the satisfaction of keeping all that sensitive data safe. Awesome. I'm sold. Sign me up for the next ISO 27001 Information Security Risk Management course, please. Haha, <laughs> let's do it. Who thought that learning about information security could be so much fun? Good morning. How can I assist you today? Hi there. I've been taking a medication for my allergies, but I've noticed some pretty uncomfortable side effects. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that. Can you tell me which medication you've been taking? It's called Olafree. It's been effective in relieving my allergies, but I've been experiencing some drowsiness and headaches. Those are common side effects of antihistamines like Olafree. I would recommend taking it before bedtime to avoid feeling drowsy during the day. That's a good idea. Is there anything you can suggest for my headaches? Drinking lots of water is always helpful, as dehydration can worsen headaches. You can also try taking some Tylenol or Advil, depending on your preference. Thank you for the advice. Do you think there's a better medication I can switch to that won't have these side effects? Absolutely. We have a few other options, like Claritin or Zyrtec, that have fewer side effects. I can help you choose one based on your specific needs and medical history. That would be great. Thank you for your assistance. No problem at all. It's important to ensure you're taking medication that works for you without causing any unnecessary discomfort. Good morning, B. Today we will be talking about the history of two precious stones, amber and pearl. Good morning, teacher. That sounds interesting. Let's start with amber. Did you know that it was formed from the sap of ancient trees? No, I didn't. That's amazing. Yes, it is. And did you know that it was highly valued by the ancient Greeks and Romans? Really? Why was it valuable to them? They believed it had healing properties and also used it for jewelry and decoration. That's really cool. Now, what about pearls? How are they formed? Pearls are formed inside oysters and other mollusks. The process starts when a foreign object, like a grain of sand, gets stuck inside the mollusk. And then what happens? The mollusk secretes a substance called nacre to coat the object, which eventually becomes a pearl. I see. So, what did people use pearls for in the past? Like amber, they were highly valued for jewelry and decoration. They were also associated with wealth and royalty. Wow, I've learned so much today. Thanks, teacher. You're welcome. Learning about the history of these precious stones is fascinating, isn't it? Hey there, B. How's it going? It's going pretty well, eh? How about you? I'm doing all right. Hey, I heard you're a machine learning engineer. What do you think about using machine learning to improve the power grid? Absolutely. With machine learning, we can create a smart grid that is capable of predicting and responding to fluctuations in power consumption. That sounds really cool. But how exactly would we go about implementing that? Well, first we need to gather data from various sources, like electricity meters and weather forecasts. Ah, uh, so we need a way to store and process all that data. That's where data engineering comes in. Exactly. And speaking of data engineering, I hear you're pretty skilled in that area. Yeah, I've definitely spent my fair share of time dealing with data pipelines and ETL jobs. But I'm curious, what specific machine learning techniques would be most useful in this scenario? Well, we could use supervised learning to train models to predict future power consumption based on past data. And we could also use unsupervised learning to uncover patterns and anomalies in the data that might indicate equipment failures or other issues. That's really interesting. But what about the human factor? How do we make sure that the smart grid is actually making things better for people? That's a great point. We need to involve utility companies and customers in the design and testing of the system to ensure that it meets their needs and preferences. Yeah, and we'll also need to think about regulations and safety concerns. Definitely. It's a complex problem, but I think we're well equipped to tackle it with our combined expertise in data engineering and machine learning. I completely agree. It's exciting to think about the potential impact we could have on the energy industry with this technology. Absolutely. Plus, it's just plain cool to work on something that has real-world applications and could make a difference in people's lives. 
Hey, have you noticed how all the girls seem to swoon over the soccer players at our school? Yeah, it's like they have some kind of magical power over them. I know, right? So, I was thinking, maybe we should try and become soccer players too. Laughs, and how do you propose we do that? Neither of us has ever played soccer before. Well, we could start practicing and maybe join the school team. Who knows, maybe we have some hidden talent. Hmm, that might actually be a good idea. But we would need to find a coach or someone to teach us. I heard that the older students on the team sometimes volunteer to train new recruits. Maybe we could ask them for help. Great idea. But we also need to make sure we have the right gear and equipment, like cleats and shin guards. Good point. And we should also start with some basic conditioning, like running and doing exercises, to improve our footwork. Agreed. And if we work hard enough, maybe we'll even make it onto the starting team and impress the ladies. Laughs, that's the spirit. Who knows, maybe we'll even become soccer stars and have our names up in lights. Laughs, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But I'm definitely up for the challenge. Let's do this. Hi there, I'm looking for some computer parts to build my own personal website server. Can you help me? Absolutely, happy to help. What kind of specifications are you looking for? I'm looking for parts that can handle a large amount of traffic. Any recommendations? For your needs, I would suggest an Intel Core i7 processor, at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and a solid-state drive for faster data processing. Sounds great. What about the graphics card? Unless you are planning on doing graphic-intensive tasks, a mid-range card like the NVIDIA GTX 1060 should be enough. That sounds good. What about the power supply? I'd recommend something around 550 watts to 650 watts for the build you are describing. Thanks for all the help. It sounds like it's going to be a great build. Do you have all the components in stock? Yes, most of them are in stock. If there's anything we don't have, we can special order it for you. Perfect, thanks. Do you have any tips for assembling the parts? Take your time and be patient. Watch some videos on YouTube and make sure you have all the tools you need before starting. Thanks for the tip. This looks like it's going to be an interesting weekend for me. Sounds like a fun project. Don't hesitate to call us if you have any other questions or need any assistance. Will do. Thanks again for your help. Have a great day. You're welcome. Have a great day too. Hey, have you seen these new shopping baskets? They're so cool. Really? I haven't seen them. What makes them so special? Well, for starters, they have wheels. No more carrying a heavy basket around the store. Oh wow, that sounds like a game changer. What else? They also have built-in cup holders. How convenient is that? That's awesome. But wait, can you still fit enough groceries in it? Absolutely. They're bigger than the regular baskets and have a mesh bottom to keep items from falling out. I'm sold. Where can we get them? Right over there by the entrance. Let's grab one and try it out. Wait, how much do they cost? Only $5. It's a steal for the convenience it provides. Okay, let's get one each. I could use a little break from carrying around a heavy basket. Great idea. And we can be shopping basket twins. Ha, ah, yes. We'll be the coolest shoppers in the store. Agreed. Plus, we'll be the envy of everyone without these baskets. We may have just started a shopping trend. Ha <laughs> ha, who knows, maybe we'll even start a hashtag. Hashtag cool for kits, cool for baskets. I like it. Our shopping baskets will be the most stylish ones out there. And to think, it all started with a simple conversation about baskets. Ah, uh, the power of innovation. Good afternoon, officer. How can I assist you today? Good afternoon, sir. I noticed that you were about to make a right turn at the upcoming intersection where the road sign says no right turn. Oh, I didn't notice that sign. Is it prohibited to turn right at this intersection at all times? Yes, sir. The sign indicates that no right turn can be made at any time. I see. Thank you for letting me know. Is there an alternative route I can take to reach my destination? Absolutely, sir. If you continue straight ahead until the next intersection, you can turn right there and reach your destination. Perfect. Thank you for your help, officer. I'll make sure to be more observant of the road signs in the future. You're welcome, sir. Just remember to always obey the road signs and signals for your safety and for others as well. Will do. Thank you for the reminder. Have a great day, officer. Likewise, sir. Drive safely. Hey B, how's it going? Ready to talk shop? What's up, hey? 
Of course, I'm always ready to chat about cloud optimization. Great. So what's new in the world of cloud application performance? Well, it's all about data processing speed these days. We need to make sure our applications are running as efficiently as possible. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about optimizing data storage as well. It's all about finding the right balance between cost and performance. Exactly, and we need to stay on top of the latest innovations in the field to make sure our clients are getting the best possible service. So, have you looked into any new technologies that could improve our performance? Definitely. I've been doing some research on serverless computing, for example. It looks like it could be a game changer in terms of speed and scalability. Interesting. Have you started testing it out yet? Yeah, we've been running some pilot projects and the results have been really promising. It's definitely worth considering for future applications. That sounds great. What about security concerns? Have you found any potential issues with serverless computing? Well, there are some concerns around data privacy and vendor lock-in, but those issues are common with cloud computing in general. It's all about finding the right provider and ensuring they have the proper protections in place. Makes sense. Speaking of providers, have you looked into any new ones that could offer better pricing or performance? Actually, I have. There's a new startup that's offering some really interesting features for a fraction of the cost of the big-name providers. Really? What's their unique selling point? They specialize in using AI to optimize resource allocation, which could lead to major performance gains. Plus, they have some innovative data security measures. Wow, that sounds great. Have you been in touch with them yet? Yeah, I've already set up a meeting to discuss potential collaboration. I think they could be a real game changer for our company. That's awesome. Let me know how it goes. By the way, have you tried out any new monitoring tools lately? Yes, I've been testing out a new tool that's really helpful for identifying bottlenecks in our applications. It's been a huge time saver for our team. That's fantastic. What's the name of the tool? It's called New Relic. Have you heard of it? Yeah, I've heard good things about it. I'll have to give it a try myself. Definitely. It's worth exploring for anyone in the cloud optimization space. All right. Well, thanks for the chat, B. You've given me a lot to think about. Anytime, A. It's always great to talk shop with a fellow optimization enthusiast. Hi there. I'm looking to apply for a visa to visit Australia. Can you help me out? Absolutely. What kind of visa are you interested in? I'm hoping to do some touring and sightseeing, so I think a tourist visa would be best. Sure thing. Have you looked into the specific requirements for the visa? Not yet. What do I need? You'll need a valid passport, a completed application form, and proof that you have enough funds to support yourself while in Australia. That all sounds doable. How long does the application process usually take? It varies, but usually takes around two to three weeks for a decision to be made. That's not too bad. I'm just excited to see kangaroos and koalas. Those are two of Australia's most famous animals, but don't forget about the wombats and wallabies too. Oh, I definitely won't. Can you recommend any must-see places to visit? The Great Barrier Reef is a must-see for any nature lover, and Uluru is an iconic landmark. Wow, I can't wait to explore all those places. Thanks for your help with the visa application. No problem at all. Have a safe and exciting trip to Australia. Wow, can you believe it's been five years since we got married? Time flies. I'm so glad we're celebrating our anniversary at this fancy restaurant. Me too, and I even made sure to wear my best suit for the occasion. You look great, dear. But don't forget, it's not just about what we wear. It's about enjoying the moment. Absolutely. Speaking of enjoyment, have you decided what you want to order for dinner? I think I'll go for the classic steak. But what about you? I'm tempted by the salmon dish, but the lobster also sounds amazing. Decisions, decisions. Why not get both? It's our anniversary after all. Ha, huh, you read my mind. And for dessert, I saw they have a chocolate lava cake. Wait, really? That's my favorite. You're the best. Anything for you, my love. So, while we wait for our food, how about we play a game of 20 questions? Sure, let me think of something. Okay, this one's a toughie. What am I thinking of? Hmm, is it something you can eat? Nope, it's not food. Is it something you use daily? Yes, I use it every day. Is it something you can wear? Bingo. You got it. It's a watch. Nice, I knew I had a good feeling about that one. You're pretty good at this. 
Maybe I should come up with harder questions. Bring it on, I'm ready for the challenge. But first, let's toast to us and many more happy years together. Cheers. Hi there, have you tried the sundae here? Yes, I just had one a few minutes ago. It was heavenly. Really? What flavor did you try? I had the classic chocolate and caramel sauce. It was the perfect mix of creamy and crunchy. That sounds delicious. I went for the strawberry and vanilla combo. It was like a summer treat in my mouth. Oh, that one's my favorite too. You can never go wrong with strawberries and cream. I agree. I also love how they sprinkle some nuts on top of the sundae. It gives a nice contrast to the sweetness. Absolutely. And the whipped cream on top just makes it even better. I feel like I could eat another one right now. It's so hard to resist. Ah, uh, same here. But maybe we should save some room for dinner. That's probably a good idea. But I already know what I'll be ordering for dessert. Let me guess, another sundae? You bet. This time, I might have to try the mint chocolate chip flavor. Now you're making me want to try it too. Hey, what's up, B? How's the weather treating you? Hey, hey. I'm good, thanks for asking. Weather's great here, how about you? Pretty good, can't complain. So, let's get down to business. I hear we're discussing how to move our application to the cloud platform. Yeah, that's right. Our team has been working on it for a while now, and we think we have some pretty solid ideas. Awesome, let's hear it. Well, for starters, we think that moving to the cloud would help us achieve more efficiency in our operations. How so? By migrating our application to the cloud platform, we can tap into the power of distributed computing and take advantage of elastic scalability. Sounds like a mouthful. Can you break that down for me in English? Sure thing. Basically, the cloud platform allows us to use more computing power only as and when we need it, which in turn helps us save costs and optimize performance. Okay, got it. What are the other benefits of moving to the cloud? Besides the scalability and cost benefits, the cloud also provides better availability, flexibility, and security features. That all sounds amazing. But what about the potential risks or drawbacks? Well, the migration process can be complex and time-consuming, and there's always the risk of data breaches or vendor lock-in. But those risks can be mitigated with proper planning and risk management. Right, makes sense. So, how do we go about making the migration happen? We'll need to consider factors like the cloud provider, the migration strategy, the data management, and the testing and implementation process. It'll require close collaboration between our software and cloud engineering teams. It seems like a big project. How long do you think it'll take? It depends on the size and complexity of our application, but we estimate it'll take at least several months to complete. Well, let's get started then. Thanks for the insights, B. No problem, always happy to help out. Welcome, everyone. I'm excited to be your guide today on this ecological adventure. We're in luck. This area is known for its population of grizzly bears, elk, and moose. We'll be making plenty of noise to alert any animals of our presence, and I have bear spray at hand just in case. Of course, but we must be respectful and keep a safe distance. The animal safety and well-being are our top priority. Yes, there is a population of endangered lynx in the park. We'll keep an eye out for any signs of them. This reserve is crucial for maintaining biodiversity and promoting a healthy ecosystem. We also want to preserve the natural beauty of the land for generations to come. My pleasure. It's always great to share my love for nature with others. Don't forget to spread the word about the importance of wildlife conservation. Hi there. I'm planning to go to Shanghai soon, and I was wondering if you could help me plan my sightseeing itinerary? Of course, I'd be happy to assist you. Have you been to Shanghai before? No, it'll actually be my first time there. Great. There are so many things to see and do in Shanghai. Are there any particular places or activities that interest you? Well, I definitely want to see the Bund and the Oriental Pearl Tower. I also heard that there are some great shopping areas in Shanghai. Yes, the Nanjing Road Shopping District is quite popular. And for a more traditional shopping experience, you can visit the UUN Bazaar. That sounds interesting. Are there any other attractions that you would recommend? You might enjoy visiting the Shanghai Museum or taking a boat ride along the Huangpu River. Those are great suggestions, thanks. When is the best time to visit these places? The best times to visit the popular attractions are usually early in the morning or later in the afternoon to avoid the crowds. Okay, that makes sense. And what about food? 
I've heard Shanghai has some amazing cuisine. Absolutely. You can try local specialties like Xiaolong Bao, which are soup dumplings, or the Shanghainese version of sweet and sour pork. That sounds delicious. Thanks for all your help. I can't wait to explore Shanghai. You're welcome. Have a great trip and enjoy your time in Shanghai. Hey B, how's it going? Not bad. Just working on the ISO 27001 audit closure report. It's been a long process. Yeah, definitely. But at least we get to add some humor in the report, right? Chuckles, oh, you mean the section on employee password habits? Yes, exactly. We can mention that some employees seem to think their password is secret if they write it on a sticky note and put it under their keyboard. Laughs, that's always a good one. And we can't forget the classic password 1234 that we found used more than once. Smirks, yeah, we need to shake things up a bit. Maybe we can suggest some alternative, more secure passwords, like Ill of Unicorns and Pizza. Laughs, perfect. And what about the section on physical security? We can mention the time we found someone's office door locked with a sticky note that said be back in 15 minutes. Laughs, yes, and the time we found a visitor badge lying on the ground outside the building. Nods, and then there was the time we found a server room unlocked with the key still in the lock. Groans, don't remind me. Let's add some recommendations about proper key management and access control for that one. Smiles, agreed. And maybe we can also include a section on social engineering, like the time we pretended to be a cleaning crew to gain access to a restricted area. Laughs, I remember that. We definitely need to stress the importance of employee awareness training in that section. Nods, definitely. All right, let's get back to work on this report. I think we've got some great content to work with. Smiles, yep, it's going to be a fun one to write. Good morning, B, how are you? Good morning, sir, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good, thanks for asking. So, let's talk about the work plan for next week. Sure, what do we need to focus on? I think we should start by reviewing our progress on the current project. Then, we can discuss the next steps. That sounds like a good idea. By the way, did you hear about the new coffee shop that just opened up down the street? No, I hadn't heard. Is it any good? I tried it yesterday and it was amazing. You should definitely check it out. Thanks for the recommendation, I'll make sure to do that. Now, back to work. What challenges do you foresee in the upcoming week? Well, we might encounter some delays due to the supplier not delivering on time. Okay, let's prepare a backup plan in case that happens. On a lighter note, did you see the funny video that went viral last night? Which one? There were so many. The one with the cat wearing a hat and dancing to salsa music. Laughs, yeah, I saw that. It was hilarious. Laughs, it definitely brightened up my evening. Anyway, let's get back to work. Is there anything else you need to discuss? No, I think that's all for now. Thanks for the chat, sir. You're welcome, B. Have a productive day. Hey B, how's it going? Have you been keeping up with our company's software testing process lately? Hey A, I'm good, thank you. Yes, I have been working on ways to ensure the integrity and reliability of our software testing process. That's great. What measures have you taken so far? Well, we have implemented a robust testing framework that covers different scenarios and makes sure all aspects of the software are tested. That sounds like a good start. Have you thought about automating some of the testing procedures to improve efficiency? Definitely. We are currently exploring different tools and technologies to automate as much of the testing process as possible. Nice. What about the human element in testing? How are we ensuring our manual testers are providing accurate feedback? We are providing extensive training and guidelines to our testers to ensure they understand the software in detail and know how to provide accurate feedback. That's good to hear. How about ensuring the security of our test environment? We have implemented strict access controls to our test environment and are regularly monitoring for any suspicious activity. Great. It seems like we're taking all the necessary measures to ensure a robust testing process. Yes, but we also need to constantly review and improve our process as technology is constantly evolving. Absolutely. But for now, let's give ourselves a pat on the back and keep up the good work. Sounds good to me. Thanks, A. Hey. Good morning, everyone. Welcome aboard the Los Angeles City Tour Bus. My name is John, and I'll be your driver and tour guide for the day. Hi, John. Thanks for having us. No problem. So, have any of you visited LA before? No, it's our first time here. Great. Then you're in for a treat. 
Did you know that LA has some of the most notable film locations and landmarks in the world? Really? Yes, we'll be passing by the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which has over 2,600 stars dedicated to famous celebrities. Wow, that's amazing. And we'll be driving through Beverly Hills, where you can see some of the most expensive houses in the world. Sounds like we're in for a luxurious tour. Indeed, and we'll also be passing by the famous Sunset Boulevard, which is known for its vibrant nightlife and music scene. That sounds like fun. Lastly, we'll be stopping by the Santa Monica Pier, which has an amusement park, an aquarium, and a beautiful beach. I've heard the sunsets on that beach are breathtaking. You betcha. So get your cameras ready and enjoy the tour. Good afternoon. I am a reporter for the Daily News. May I ask if you have a few minutes to answer some questions? Of course. What can I help you with? Well, I noticed you are doing some unique artwork. Can you tell me about it? Yes, I create sculptures out of recycled materials. It's my way of helping the environment and expressing my creativity. That's interesting. What inspired you to do this? I've always been passionate about the environment and I also love making things with my hands. So, I combined both my interests and it just came naturally to me. That's impressive. What materials have you used for your artwork? I use anything from scrap metal, old furniture, and even broken toys. I try to find materials that people normally throw away and give them new life. It sounds like you are quite resourceful. Thank you. I try my best. With your passion for environmental conservation and skills for creating artwork, do you have any future plans for your art? Yes, I hope to have an exhibition of my work one day and raise awareness for the importance of recycling. That's wonderful. Do you have a favorite piece of work that you've created? It's hard to pick one, but I'm especially proud of my latest creation that was made from old bicycle chains. I can't wait to see it. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your art with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for your interest. Hey, did you go to Sarah's party last night? Yeah, I did. It was such a blast. Nice. What did you guys talk about? Oh, we talked about our favorite music and shared some of our favorite songs. Cool. What's your favorite band right now? I'm really into the Lumineers at the moment. How about you? I love classic rock. Led Zeppelin is my all-time favorite. Yeah, they're awesome. Have you listened to any new bands lately? Actually, my friend told me about this new indie band called The Head and the Heart. They're pretty good. Oh, I think I've heard of them. Do you have a favorite song by them? Yeah, definitely Lost in My Mind. You should listen to it. Awesome, I'll check it out. Have you heard of The National? Yeah, I have. I really like their song Blood Buzz Ohio. Oh, I love that one too. You have great taste in music. Thanks. So do you. Do you have any recommendations for me? Yeah, you should listen to Stubborn Love by the Lumineers. I think you'll really like it. Okay, I'll add it to my playlist. Thanks for the recommendation. No problem. It's always great to discover new music and share it with friends. Totally agree. Speaking of which, we should create a playlist together for the next party. Yes. That's a great idea. We'll have the best tunes in town. Hi there. I heard we're working on implementing a smart grid system using machine learning techniques. That's right. We want to create a system that can predict energy consumption patterns and adjust power distribution to optimize efficiency. Interesting. So, how are you going to teach the machines to identify these patterns? We will use historical energy consumption data to train the system. That way, it can recognize patterns and make predictions with greater accuracy. Makes sense. But what about outliers or unexpected events? How will the system adapt to those situations? Well, we'll have to incorporate algorithms that can detect abnormal behavior and adjust accordingly. It's definitely not foolproof, but it's a step in the right direction. Wow, it sounds like you have your work cut out for you. What kind of challenges do you anticipate? One major obstacle is the sheer volume of data we'll be dealing with. It can quickly become overwhelming if we don't have a proper system in place to manage it. That's definitely a concern. Do you have any creative solutions in mind? I'm thinking of using clustering algorithms to group data points together and simplify the analysis process. We'll also need to develop a reliable method for identifying errors and cleaning up the data. Sounds like you've got it all under control. I'm excited to see the results of this project. Me too. It's definitely a complex undertaking, but I think the benefits will be worth it in the end. Who knows, maybe we'll pave the way for even smarter energy systems in the future. That would be amazing. 
I think this project has the potential to make a real difference. I couldn't agree more. Let's work together to make it a success. Hey B, have you had any success with the source code analysis tool we implemented? Yeah, it's been working great. We've caught a bunch of vulnerabilities that we wouldn't have found manually. That's awesome. What kind of vulnerabilities have you been finding? Mostly input validation issues and some buffer overflows. But we also found a few instances of hard-coded passwords. Yikes, that's definitely a no-no. Have you been able to fix those issues? Yeah, we've been working on it. It's been a bit of a pain to change all the hard-coded passwords, but we found a really clever way to do it using encryption. Nice, I'm glad we have people like you working on it. Speaking of clever solutions, have you seen the latest internet meme about code reviews? No, I haven't. What is it? It's a picture of a bunch of cats sitting around a computer and the caption says, Code Review by the Purring Committee. It's hilarious. Haha, ah, that's great. It's nice to know that even in the serious world of software development, we can still have a little bit of fun. Absolutely. Hey, did you hear there's going to be a company-wide ping-pong tournament next month? No way. I've been practicing my serve for weeks now. You better watch out, eh? Oh, it's on, B. It's on. But first, let's get back to fixing those vulnerabilities. We've got work to do. Hey B, how's it going? I heard we have an exciting project coming up. Yeah, I'm super pumped about it. Are you ready to get to work? Absolutely. So, first things first, we need to make sure the game runs smoothly. Do you have any ideas on how we can achieve that? Well, we could start by optimizing the graphics and reducing the game's file size. That's a great idea. We can also use some advanced rendering techniques to create more realistic visuals. Exactly. And we should also focus on creating interactive elements that really engage the players. Yes, the user experience is crucial. We should ensure that the controls are easy to use and intuitive. And we can also add some cool special effects to make the game more dynamic and exciting. Yes, let's definitely not forget about those. But we also need to make sure that they don't overpower the gameplay. Absolutely, balance is key. Speaking of balance, what about the character animations? Should they be realistic or a bit exaggerated for the sake of fun? I think a bit of exaggeration is fine as long as it doesn't break the immersion. It also depends on the type of game we're making. Good point. And what about the sound effects and music? They're just as important as the graphics and animations. We should use them to enhance the gameplay and create a unique atmosphere. I agree. We can also use sound effects to give feedback to the players and make the game more responsive. Definitely. And lastly, we need to test the game thoroughly to ensure it's bug-free and runs smoothly on different devices. Yes, let's not skip that step. So, are you ready to create the best game ever? Let's do it, B. I'm excited to see what we can come up with. Hi there. I'm looking for a new suit jacket to wear for my upcoming business trip. Do you have any recommendations? Absolutely. We just received a shipment of suits straight from the New York Fashion Week exhibit. They're all high quality and stylish, perfect for any business occasion. Wow, that sounds perfect. Can you show me one in particular that stands out? Of course. This one is made from a blend of wool and silk, which gives it a luxurious feel and a rich, deep navy color. The cut is slim and modern, so it won't make you look boxy or outdated. That sounds great. How does it fit, though? I don't want something too tight or too loose. This jacket has a tailored fit, meaning it's close to the body but still allows for movement and comfort. You won't have to worry about feeling restricted during a long day of meetings or travel. Hmm, I'm not sure if navy is the color for me, though. Do you have any other options? Sure. We also have the same cut in a classic charcoal gray. It's just as versatile but gives off a slightly different vibe. I think I like the sound of the gray one. Can I try it on to see how it looks? Absolutely. We have a fitting room in the back where you can try it on, and we can make any necessary alterations on site to ensure the perfect fit. That sounds ideal. I'll give it a try. Thanks for your help, B. My pleasure, A. Let me know if you have any questions or need any additional assistance. Hey there, B. How's the database doing? Doing well, thanks for asking. How about you, how's the penetration testing going? It's going pretty good. We've discovered some vulnerabilities in the system, but nothing too major. That's good to hear. Have you figured out how to patch them yet? Yeah, we've got a plan in place. It's just a matter of implementing it and making sure everything is secure. 
Sounds like a plan. You know, I always find it interesting how the hackers are always one step ahead of us. Yeah, it's a constant game of cat and mouse. But that's what keeps us on our toes and makes the job engaging. Definitely. I'm just glad we have people like you on our team to keep our data safe. Thanks, B. It's always a pleasure working with you guys. Speaking of working together, do you have any recommendations on how we can improve our database security in the future? Well, there are always best practices that we can follow, such as regularly updating software and conducting regular security assessments. Makes sense. We'll make sure we keep those in mind moving forward. Absolutely. And if you ever have any concerns or questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me and the team. Will do. Thanks again for all your hard work and expertise, A. Eh? No problem, B. It's what I'm here for. Good morning, B. I noticed we have a surplus of stamps in the supply room. Do you have any ideas on what we can do with them? Hi, A. Yes, I was thinking we could maybe host an office-wide stamp art contest. Employees can use the stamps to create unique works of art and the best ones can be displayed in the office. That sounds like a great idea, B. We could use social media to promote it and encourage employees to get creative. Definitely. We could also donate some of the stamps to local schools or art programs. They might appreciate the extra supplies. I like that idea too. Maybe we can reach out to them and see if they are interested in receiving them. Another option could be to use the stamps to create personalized company thank you notes. It adds a personal touch and reduces our spending on other office supplies. I like that idea as well, B. We can have employees create their own personal thank you notes and we can even have a stamp featuring our company logo to add a professional touch. Exactly. It's a win-win situation. Plus, we can always use the leftover stamps for handling mail and other office tasks. Great thinking, B. Let's get started on implementing these ideas as soon as possible. Absolutely, A. I'll start putting together a proposal and gathering information about local organizations that may be interested in the donated stamps. Perfect. And I'll see if we can get some art supplies for the stamp art contest. This will be a fun way to engage everyone in the office and make good use of our resources. Sounds fantastic, A. I'm excited to see the creative ideas that come from this. Hey, did you see our colleagues chatting during lunch break? Yeah, they seemed like they were having a good time. What were they talking about? Mostly about their exercise routines. Oh, interesting. What kind of exercise do they do? Well, one of them is a runner and the other is into weightlifting. Wow, that's quite a contrast. Which one do you think is better? I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. It depends on your fitness goals. That's a good point. What's your exercise routine like? I like to mix it up with a combination of cardio and strength training. Sounds like a well-rounded routine. Do you have any favorite exercises? Yes, I love doing squats and burpees. They really get my heart rate up. I can't stand burpees. I prefer something like cycling or swimming. Those are great low-impact options. Do you ever do any resistance training? Not really. I feel intimidated by the weightlifting area in the gym. I used to feel the same way, but once you start seeing progress, it can be really motivating. Maybe I'll give it a try one of these days. How often do you exercise? I try to get at least three to four sessions in per week. What about you? I aim for two to three sessions, but sometimes work gets in the way. Yeah, it can be tough to fit in exercise when you have a busy schedule. Definitely. But I always feel better when I make the effort to exercise. Same here. It's important to prioritize our health and well-being. Agreed. Maybe we can motivate each other to stick to our routines. Sounds like a plan. Let's plan to check in with each other on our progress next week. Hey, have you ever tried bibimbap before? Oh yeah, I have. It's an amazing Korean dish. Yeah, I heard it's a mix of rice, vegetables, and meat. I'm curious, how does it taste? Trust me, it's a burst of flavors in your mouth. The combination is so unique. Wow, I'm tempted to try it now. Is it spicy though? Not necessarily. Some places make it mild, while others offer spicy versions. You can choose what suits your palate. That's great to hear. I don't want to end up running to get water after every bite. Haha, uh -huh, I know what you mean. But with bibimbap, it's all about balance. The sauce that they put in it really ties everything together. Sauce? What sauce? It's called goju jam. It's a fermented paste made of chili powder, soy, and bean paste. It's the perfect sauce for this dish. 
I see. By the way, where's the best place to try bibimbap in town? There's a Korean restaurant down the road that serves amazing bibimbap. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you can always make it at home. There are plenty of recipes online. Oh, I might actually try making it once. But I'm not sure if I can get all the ingredients. Don't worry, most ingredients in bibimbap are easily accessible. Just make sure you get the right kind of rice and vegetables. Thanks for the tip. I appreciate it. You've definitely convinced me to try it now. You're welcome. Trust me, you won't regret it. It's one of my favorite dishes ever. Hey there, B. Did you hear about the ISO 27001 security incident? Oh yeah, I did. That was quite a breach, don't you think? Yeah, but you know what they say, life is tough, but it's tougher when you're stupid. Laughs, that's a good one. But seriously, the company needs to step up its security game. Absolutely. In this day and age, cyber attacks are becoming more and more common. We have to be vigilant. That's true. Maybe the company should invest in more advanced security measures? Yeah, that's a good idea. I heard they have a new AI-powered security system that can help prevent breaches. Really? That sounds super high-tech. Maybe we should suggest it to the higher-ups. We should. And while we're at it, how about we also suggest a team-building activity to boost morale after the incident? Yes, I think the team could use some bonding time. How about an escape room challenge? Oh, that sounds like fun. I love puzzles. Maybe we can use our problem-solving skills to crack the code and save the company's data. Laughs, now we're talking. Let's pitch these ideas and show them we can turn a negative situation into a positive one. That's the spirit. Together, we can make this company even stronger. Good morning. How can I assist you today, B? Good morning. I was just curious about the new products you have in store. Ah, uh, we have some exciting items. Our latest addition is a smart water bottle. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. What does it do? It tracks your daily water intake and reminds you to drink water throughout the day. Plus, it has a touchscreen display that shows the temperature of the water. That sounds really cool. Do you have it available in different colors? Yes, we have it in pink, blue, and green. Which one catches your eye? I think I'll go with green. How much is it? It's $25, but I can offer you a 10% discount if you sign up for our loyalty program. Oh, that's great. I'll definitely sign up. By the way, how's your golf game going? Haha, <laughs> I haven't played in a while due to work, but I'm planning to hit the course over the weekend. How about you? I'm actually playing this Saturday with some friends. Do you play at a certain course or do you switch it up? I like to switch it up, but I do have a couple of favorite courses. Where are you playing this weekend? We're going to the Oak Tree Golf Club. Have you played there before? Yes, I have. That's one of my favorites. Have a great time and be sure to swing those clubs. Ha ha, thanks. I will for sure. Thanks for all your help. Anytime, have a great day. Hey, have you tried any traditional Australian cakes or desserts before? No, but I'm curious. What do Australians usually bake or eat? Well, there are a variety of sweets that represent the culture of Australia. For instance, lamingtons are one of the most traditional cakes. It's a sponge cake coated with chocolate and coconut flakes. Wow, that sounds delicious. What about other desserts? Pavlova is another must-try dessert. It's essentially a meringue base topped with whipped cream and fruit. It's light and refreshing, perfect for a summer day. That sounds amazing. What's the story behind pavlova? There's a debate on whether it's an Australian or New Zealand dessert, but the name is derived from a Russian ballerina named Anna Pavlova who toured both countries in the 1920s. Interesting. What about something savory with a hint of sweetness? You should try a meat pie with ketchup or chutney. The mixture of meat and sweet condiments is a classic Aussie combo. Hmm, that's something new to me. What's the texture like inside the pie? The filling can differ, but typically it's minced meat with a gravy sauce that's wrapped in a pastry shell. It's a hearty and comforting food. I can imagine that being a perfect winter snack. Speaking of savory pies, have you heard of a sausage roll? Yes, that's another popular snack in Australia. It's essentially sausage meat wrapped in flaky pastry. It's a savory treat that you can easily find in bakeries or convenience stores. It sounds like Australians love their pastry. What about something not covered in pastry? Have you tried a Tim Tam? 
It's a chocolate cookie, coated in chocolate and filled with chocolate cream. The best way to enjoy it is by doing a Tim Tam Slam. A Tim Tam Slam? That sounds fun. How do you do it? You bite off both ends of the Tim Tam and then use it as a straw to drink a hot beverage like coffee or tea. The heat melts the chocolate and cream, creating a gooey and delicious treat. That sounds like a great party trick. Thanks for introducing me to all these Aussie classics. Good morning. I have some freshly baked cakes here. Would you like to try them? Hi there. Your cakes look amazing. Which one is your personal favorite? Thank you. Personally, I really love the mango cheesecake. It has the perfect balance of sweetness and tanginess. That sounds delicious. I'll have to try it. And I just brewed a fresh batch of coffee. Would you like to have a cup? Yes, please. What kind of coffee is it? It's a single-origin Ethiopian coffee. It has a fruity and floral taste with a medium body. Perfect. I think that would pair well with the mango cheesecake. Agreed. So, how did you get into baking? My mom was a baker, so I grew up watching her make all sorts of desserts. I fell in love with it and went to culinary school to perfect my skills. That's awesome. And how about you? How did you become a coffee expert? I started working in a cafe during college and got hooked on the art of coffee making. I've been studying and perfecting my craft ever since. It definitely shows. This coffee tastes amazing. Do you have any tips for brewing the perfect cup at home? Sure. First, use freshly roasted beans and make sure you grind them just before brewing. And always use water that's just off the boil. Thank you. I'll have to try that. So, what's next for your baking business? I'm working on creating some new flavors for the upcoming holiday season. I'm thinking maybe a pumpkin spice cake and a cranberry orange tart. Yum. I can't wait to try those. And for us, we're thinking about sourcing some new exotic coffee beans. That sounds exciting. Let me know when you get them in. Cheers to delicious cakes and coffee. Hi there. I'm planning a trip to Latvia and I was wondering if you could help me plan my itinerary? Of course. Latvia is a beautiful country with a diverse range of attractions. What are some things you're interested in seeing and doing? I'd love to visit some historic sites and see some of the natural beauty in the country. Great. A must-visit is the old town in Riga, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And if you're interested in nature, you should check out Gauja National Park where you can go hiking, skiing, and even bobsledding. Wow, that sounds amazing. Are there any traditional Latvian foods that I should try? Definitely. You have to try some Latvian black bread, smoked fish, and their famous smoked meats like pork, beef, and goose. Yum, that all sounds delicious. Can you recommend any local bars or nightlife spots to check out? In Riga, you should check out the Skyline Bar which offers stunning views of the city. And for some traditional Latvian music, head to the Foklub Zala Pegrabs in the old town. Sounds like a plan. What about transportation options in Latvia? The most convenient way to get around is by renting a car, but there are also trains and buses that run throughout the country. Thanks for all the great recommendations. I'm really looking forward to my trip to Latvia now. You're welcome. Have a great trip and enjoy everything that Latvia has to offer. Hey B, have you ever tried Tom Yum Soup? No, I haven't. What is it? It's a spicy and sour soup from Thailand. You should try it sometime. I'm not a big fan of spicy food, but I'm intrigued. Don't worry, the sourness helps balance out the spice. It's really tasty. Okay, you've convinced me. Where should I go to try it? There's a great Thai restaurant on Main Street that serves it. Fantastic. Is it a popular dish? Absolutely, it's one of the most popular soups in Thailand. Any tips on how to eat it? Do I add anything to it? Nope, just eat it as is. The ingredients should be enough to spice up your taste buds. Got it. I'm excited to try it now. You won't regret it. Let me know how it goes. Will do. Maybe we can grab some together next time. That sounds like a spicy adventure I won't say no to. Haha, ha, I like your punny sense of humor. Thanks, I try my best to spice up my conversations. You're funny. Tom Yum better watch out, we might just add some more humor to it. Haha, ha, who knew food could bring so much joy? Hey B, have you heard about the news company that wants to redesign their website? Yeah, I heard about it. They want to increase their visitor count, right? Exactly. And they're looking for a new front-end engineer and a website designer to help with the project. 
That sounds like a fun challenge. I'd love to be a part of it. Me too. As a front-end developer, I can help with coding the website and making it user-friendly. And as a website designer, I can make sure it looks visually appealing and easy to navigate. That's a great combination. We can work together to make this website a masterpiece. Absolutely. And we should also use some creative ideas to stand out from other news websites. I agree. We can add some animations, interactive designs, and eye-catching headlines to grab visitors' attention. And we should make it mobile-friendly, too. Nowadays, most people access the internet through their mobiles. You're right. We need to make sure that their mobile viewing experience is just as enjoyable. This is going to be challenging, but I'm excited to work on it with you, A. Same here, B. Let's make this website the talk of the town. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 cybersecurity? No, I haven't. What is it? It's basically a set of guidelines for information security management. It's pretty important for businesses and organizations to follow. Got it. So, what kind of measures does it include? Well, it includes a range of things such as risk assessments, security controls, and ongoing management. Interesting. Do you think it's necessary for a small business like mine? Absolutely. Cyber attacks affect businesses of all sizes, and taking preventative measures can save you a lot of money and trouble in the long run. I see. Do you have any tips on how I can get started with implementing ISO 27001? First thing you can do is conduct a risk assessment to identify potential cybersecurity threats to your business. After that, you can implement the relevant security controls. Okay, that makes sense. How about ongoing management? You can assign a team or a person to oversee the cybersecurity measures you have in place and ensure that they are updated regularly. Got it. Thanks for the advice, eh? No problem. Happy to help. Is there anything else you'd like to know about ISO 27001? Actually, yes. How long does it typically take for a business to become compliant with ISO 27001? It really depends on the size of the business and the industry it's in. It could take anywhere from a few months to a year. Wow, that's a pretty long time. But I suppose it's better to be safe than sorry. Exactly. It's better to take the time and effort to ensure your business is secure than to suffer the consequences of a cyber attack. Hello there, sir. It's great to have you here at the harbor today. Hi, thank you for having me. I heard that there have been some concerns about the accuracy of the fishery statistics. Can you tell me more about it? Yes, that's correct. We've been having some difficulties in collecting accurate data, especially from the smaller fishing boats that operate in this area. I see. That can be a problem for the industry as a whole. Do you have any suggestions on how we can improve our data collection process? One idea is to implement a digital tracking system that can monitor the number and size of fish caught by each boat. It would require some investment up front, but it would provide a more accurate and efficient method of gathering data. That's a good idea. It would be beneficial for both the fishermen and the government agencies responsible for managing the fisheries. I will bring this up with my colleagues and see what we can do. Another suggestion is to provide educational programs to fishermen to better record their catches and provide more accurate data. It's a more cost-effective option, but it may take longer to see significant improvements. I like that idea, too. We could partner with local universities or organizations to provide these programs. This would also help with empowering the fishing communities and promoting sustainable practices. That's a great point. We want to ensure that our fisheries are managed effectively and sustainably for future generations. Thank you for taking the time to discuss these ideas with me, sir. Likewise, it's always good to hear from those on the front lines of the industry. Thank you for your insights, and let's keep working together to improve our fisheries management practices. Hi B, have you ever heard of ISO 27001? Erm, um, yeah, isn't it related to information security or something? Yes, that's right. It's a standard for information security management systems. Ah, uh, got it. So, what's the deal with ISO 27001? Why is it important? Well, it sets out the requirements for keeping sensitive information secure, which is pretty important in today's digital age. Yeah, I can imagine. But is it really necessary for all businesses to comply with it? Not necessarily, but it can certainly help with risk management and reassure customers that their data is being handled appropriately. Okay, I see what you mean. But isn't it really complicated to implement? Not necessarily. There are resources and training available to help businesses implement it smoothly. 
Ah, uh, that's good to know. So, how can we get started if we wanted to implement ISO 27001? Well, first we need to assess our current information security practices and identify any areas that need improvement. Got it. And then? Then we need to develop a plan for implementing the necessary changes and train our staff on how to comply with the standard. Sounds like it could be a lot of work. It definitely can be, but it's worth it to ensure the security of our information and protect our customers' trust. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for explaining all of this to me, A. Hi there, B. How's your day so far? Hey A. It's been busy as usual. How about you? Same here, but it's always exciting working with big data. Speaking of which, have you found anything interesting lately? Oh yeah, definitely. I've been looking at customer purchase patterns and found some real gems. Nice. What kinds of things are you looking for exactly? Well, we're trying to understand what drives customers to buy our products so we can improve our sales strategies. Ah, uh, I see. Well, I can help you with that. I've been studying different clustering algorithms that can group customers based on their behavior. That sounds like it could be very helpful. But how do we validate those clusters? Good question. We can use a technique called silhouette analysis, which measures how similar each customer is to others in their cluster. Wow, that's a lot more sophisticated than just looking at average purchase amounts. Definitely. And it's important because we want to make sure we're not missing any important segments. Absolutely. So what are some of the patterns you've found so far? Well, one interesting trend is that customers who purchase one category of our products are very likely to buy other categories as well. Really? That's fascinating. Yeah, and I think it suggests that we should be cross-selling more aggressively. That could be a great opportunity for us. Have you looked at anything related to marketing campaigns? Yes, actually. I've been analyzing the response rates for different types of campaigns. And what have you found? Well, email campaigns seem to perform the best overall, but SMS campaigns are more effective for certain segments. Hmm, that's interesting. Maybe we should start segmenting our campaigns more carefully to maximize their impact. Exactly. That's what I was thinking too. You know, it's amazing what we can learn from big data these days. Couldn't agree more. The possibilities are really endless. Yeah, it's definitely an exciting time to be in the analytics field. Absolutely. Well, it looks like we've got our work cut out for us. Let's get back to it. Sounds like a plan. Let's do this. Hi there, I heard that you're the cloud architect here. I'm a data engineer and I was wondering if you could help me build a scalable data processing system. Sure thing. I'd love to help. What are your specifications? Well, we need to process large volumes of data efficiently and store it securely in the cloud. Also, we're thinking of adding more servers to accommodate future growth. All right. Let me suggest some cloud storage options and I can help you design the architecture for the system. That sounds great. What kind of cloud storage options do you recommend? Well, we could use AWS S3, Azure Blob Storage, or Google Cloud Storage. They all have durable and highly scalable object storage services. I see. Do you have any preference among them? Personally, I prefer AWS S3 because of its rich feature set and better cost management. But we can weigh the pros and cons of all options together. Agreed. What about the processing engine? Do you have any suggestion? You could use Apache Spark for that. It is highly optimized for large-scale data processing and can run on distributed systems with ease. Okay. That sounds good. How about the network and security features? We'll need to set up Virtual Private Cloud, VPC, for network isolation and we should encrypt data at rest and in transit. We can also put some firewalls to isolate the system from unwanted traffic. I see. Can we use Kubernetes to manage the containers? Yes. Kubernetes can help to manage the containers and automate deployment, scaling, and management of the application. Great. This all sounds very promising. Can you help me with the implementation and testing? Sure, let's set up a meeting to discuss the details and plan the implementation. Thank you very much for your support. No worries. I'm glad I could help. This project will be exciting. Hey B, how's it going? It's going well, thanks for asking. How about you? Can't complain. Hey listen, I was wondering if you could help me take a look at our medical database structure. Sure, I'd love to take a look. What seems to be the problem? I've noticed that there's a lot of redundant data and some of the tables aren't normalized. 
Ah yes, those are common database issues. We could definitely optimize the structure. Great, I was hoping we could make it more efficient for our data retrieval processes. Definitely. Have you considered using indexing for faster retrieval? Yes, I've heard about that. Would you be able to explain it to me in more detail? Of course. Essentially, an index is a data structure that speeds up data retrieval operations by allowing the database to quickly navigate to the relevant data. That sounds like it could really help us out. What other optimizations would you recommend? Another useful tool would be partitioning. This enables us to split the database into smaller, more manageable pieces for quicker retrievals. Excellent, you're really clued up on database optimization. Thanks, it's a passion of mine. Have you considered including some disaster recovery mechanisms? That's a great idea. What methods would be best suited for a medical database? It depends on the size and complexity of the database, but options like backups and replication could be useful. Good point. How about security measures? How do we ensure that patient data is kept confidential? Security is absolutely vital. We could use firewalls, encryption, and access controls to safeguard the data. Okay, so with your expertise and my knowledge of the system, we should be able to optimize our medical database structure in no time. Absolutely, working together is always the best way to tackle any challenge. Thanks for your help, B. You're a true database wizard. Laughs, thanks, A. It's great to have a grateful colleague like you on the team. We'll make this database sing. Good morning, B. How are you today? I'm doing great, thanks. Excited to see the latest design you've come up with. I'm glad to hear that. I've been working diligently on it. Let me show you what I have so far. Wow, this looks fantastic. I love the use of vibrant colors and the unique shapes. Thank you. I wanted to make something that stands out and catches people's attention. You definitely accomplished that. But I have to ask, what inspired this design? Well, to be honest, I was watching a lot of nature documentaries and got inspired by how different animals use patterns and colors to attract mates or deter predators. Ha, ah, that's so interesting. I'm glad you were watching something educational instead of just binge-watching TV shows. Laughs, yes, I try to balance it out. So, what do you think of the overall design? Any suggestions for improvement? Honestly, I think it's spot on. I wouldn't change a thing. This is exactly what I was hoping for. That's great to hear. I always aim to make my clients happy. So, when do you need the finished product? If possible, I would like to have it by next week. We're hosting a big event and I want to use this design in our promotional materials. Not a problem, I can definitely deliver it by then. Thanks for bringing me on board for this project. No, thank you for your hard work and creativity. It's been a pleasure working with you. Hi B, it's great to be here today to discuss how we can use machine learning to improve our insurance claims process. Yes, I couldn't agree more, A. As a machine learning engineer, I believe we can use this technology to make the claims process faster and more efficient. Absolutely. Not only that, but we can also improve the accuracy of our claims. By using machine learning algorithms, we can identify fraudulent claims and prevent them from being processed. That's a great point, A. And using these algorithms, we can also make faster decisions about claims, which can save us a lot of time and resources in the long run. Yes, by leveraging machine learning to process claims, we can reduce the workload of our claims adjusters and allow them to spend more time on complex claims. And we can also use machine learning to automate certain tasks, such as data entry and document processing, which can free up our staff to focus on more important tasks. That's right, B. With the use of machine learning, we can create more personalized experiences for our clients, allowing us to tailor our services to their specific needs. And we can also use machine learning to analyze data and identify trends, which can help us improve our risk assessment models and offering new insurance products. Absolutely, B. By leveraging machine learning, we can transform the way we do business and improve the customer experience. I'm excited to see where this technology can take us in the future. With the right data and algorithms, the possibilities are endless. Me too, B. It's an exciting time to be in the insurance industry, and I can't wait to see what innovative solutions we can create using machine learning. Hi there, I'm a food critic and I'm here to explore the street food scene in Guangzhou. What's your specialty, B? Oh, that sounds great. Let me taste it. Hmm, the noodles are perfectly cooked, and the prawns are fresh and juicy. I love it. Definitely. Oh wow, the steamed dumplings filled with pork and vegetables are fabulous. I'm impressed with the smooth and delicate texture. 
Thank you so much. I'm thrilled that you enjoy my food. What else would you like to try? How about the roasted pork ribs? They look so delicious. Great choice. Here you go, piping hot out of the oven. Mmm, these ribs are to die for. So tender, flavorful, and the spices blend together perfectly. I'm convinced, your food is simply amazing. I'll take a glass of lemonade, please. Ah. A perfect balance of sweet and sour, I love it. Thank you for your hospitality, B. I'll definitely recommend your food to all my friends. It's my pleasure, thank you so much for coming. Let me know if you need anything else. Hi there. I'm a traveler and I'm checking out of my hotel tomorrow. Before I go, I wanted to confirm if I can give some feedback on the accommodation. Of course, I'll be happy to help you out. How was your experience staying here? It has been great, really. The room was cozy and clean, and the staff was very friendly and helpful. That's great to hear. We always aim to give our guests a comfortable experience. Was there anything that we could have done better? Well, to be honest, the Wi-Fi was a bit slow, but I guess that's something you can't control. I understand. We'll make sure to mention it to our IT department. Is there anything else we can assist you with? No, everything else was good. Oh, wait, can I ask for your opinion? I'm planning to go around the city. Do you have any recommendations? Absolutely. There are so many great places to visit, but my personal favorite is the city park. You can have a picnic there or rent a bike and ride around. That sounds like a great idea. Thank you for the suggestion. You're welcome. We're always here to help you out. By the way, enjoy the rest of your stay here and have a safe trip back home. Thank you again for the wonderful service. I'll definitely recommend this hotel to my friends. Hi there, B. I'm glad you could join me here in the meeting room. Are you ready to tackle the task of optimizing our company's database system? Hey, hey. I am always ready for a good challenge. What issues are we currently dealing with? Well, it seems like our database is starting to slow down, and we have been experiencing some data inconsistencies. Do you have any solutions in mind? Absolutely. I suggest we start with analyzing our database structure and identifying any redundant data. It might take some time, but it will definitely pay off in the long run. That sounds like a great idea. So how do we go about it? First, we can conduct a data audit to identify data that is no longer needed. After that, we can focus on optimizing the indexing of our data to improve search performance. Interesting. You really know your stuff, B. But do you think we need to upgrade our hardware? Upgrading the hardware can definitely help, but let's see if we can optimize things on the software side first. We might not have to spend as much money that way. That's a good point. And while we're at it, do you have any suggestions for improving data accuracy? Yes, we can set up data validation rules to prevent data entry errors. We can also introduce data quality checks and data integrity checks. Great ideas, B. You really know how to optimize a database system. Thanks, A. I take pride in my work. With proper database optimization, we can enjoy faster and more efficient processes, which will contribute to the growth of our company. I couldn't agree more. So, let's get to work and optimize our system. Hi B, how's it going today? It's going well, thanks. Ready to get started on the ISO 27001 audit? Absolutely. Have you noticed any areas of concern that we should pay special attention to? Well, I've noticed there's been a lot of emails sent back and forth without proper encryption. Ah, uh, yes. That's definitely something we should address. On a lighter note, have you tried the new coffee shop down the street? Funny you mention that, I actually went there this morning. It's really good. Nice, I've been meaning to check it out. So, getting back to the audit, have you noticed any physical security risks we should be aware of? Well, there's a door on the second floor that doesn't always lock properly. We should make sure that's fixed. Okay, noted. By the way, did you hear about the IT department's softball game last weekend? No, what happened? They lost pretty badly, but it sounds like they had a lot of fun anyway. Ah. Well, as long as they had fun, that's all that matters. Back to the audit, have you reviewed the password policies yet? Yes, and I think we need to make some updates to ensure stronger passwords are being used. Sounds good. And hey, speaking of passwords, have you ever played the game where you have to guess someone's password based on clues? No, but it sounds like a fun challenge. Maybe we could try it for team building sometime. That's a great idea. All right, let's get back to work. Hey B, do you know anything about ISO 27001 encryption key? 
Yeah, I have heard of it, but why do you ask? I'm just curious. I read that it is used to protect information from getting stolen. Yes, that's correct. It is a security standard that ensures the confidentiality of the data through encryption. Wow, that sounds fancy, but what does encryption even mean? To put it simply, encryption is like having a secret code that only the authorized persons can decipher, making it difficult for unauthorized people to access the data. That makes sense. So, is ISO 27001 encryption key like a superhero for our confidential data? Haha, uh -huh, you could say that. It's like our data security guard, always keeping a close eye on our information. You know what they say, with great power comes great responsibility. I'm glad we have ISO 27001 encryption key to protect us. Absolutely. And because it's a standard, we can trust that it's being implemented correctly and efficiently. It's like having our own personal bodyguard for our data, cool. Yes, with ISO 27001 encryption key, we can rest easy knowing that our information is in good hands. You know what would be cool? If we could give our encryption key a name, like how people name their cars or pets. Ha ha ha, that's a fun idea. We could name it the protector or the iron key. I like the protector. It definitely suits our hero encryption key. Thanks for explaining everything, B. No problem, always happy to talk tech with you. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 countermeasure? Yeah, I have. It's all about ensuring the security of information. Right. So, have you implemented any measures to comply with it? Of course, I have. We have firewalls, antivirus software, and password policies in place. That's great. But, have you considered implementing physical security measures as well? Hmm, what do you mean by that? Like restricted access to server rooms and backup tapes, CCTV cameras, and biometric authentication. Oh, I see. I haven't thought about that yet. Thanks for the suggestion. No problem. It's always better to be safe than sorry, right? Absolutely. By the way, have you heard about the recent security breach at XYZ Company? Yeah, I did. It's scary how vulnerable we can be to cyber threats. Exactly. That's why it's essential to stay informed and updated about the latest security measures. That's true. By the way, have you heard of a new security software that's been making waves in the market? Oh, do tell me more about it. It's called Xprotect and it offers real-time threat detection and response capabilities. Wow, that sounds impressive. Have you tried it before? Not yet, but I'm planning to test it out soon. Do you want to join me? Sure, why not? I'm always up for discovering new ways to enhance our security measures. Great. We can schedule a demo with the vendor and see how it works. Sounds like a plan. Let's set it up as soon as possible. Good morning, sir. How can I assist you with the room service today? Hi. I would like to request for some fresh towels and an extra pillow, please. Sure thing, sir. Would you like any additional amenities such as shampoo or soap? No thanks, I still have some left from yesterday's cleaning. All right. Your request for new towels and an extra pillow will be delivered to your room shortly. Thank you so much. You guys really provide excellent service here. We always strive to provide the best service to our valued guests. By the way, have you tried our breakfast buffet yet? Yes, I did. It was delicious, especially the scrambled eggs. That's great to hear. Our chef takes pride in preparing the best quality food for our guests. I can tell. I also noticed how clean and well-maintained the whole hotel is. Kudos to your housekeeping team. Thank you, sir. Our housekeeping team works hard to maintain the cleanliness and comfort of all rooms and common areas. By the way, do you happen to know any good restaurants around the area? Sure. Our hotel concierge can assist you in finding the perfect dining spot. They have a list of recommended restaurants and can even make reservations for you. Oh, that's very helpful. Thank you for the tip. You're welcome, sir. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Not at the moment, but I'll definitely let you know if I need anything else. Thanks again for the excellent service. It's our pleasure, sir. Have a pleasant stay and don't hesitate to let us know if you have any concerns or requests. Good evening, Chef B. I'm excited to try the dishes of this Michelin-starred restaurant. Thank you, A. We take great pride in our Swiss cuisine and incorporating local ingredients. What are some unique Swiss ingredients you use in your dishes? We use Appenzeller cheese, Gruyere cheese, and veal in many of our dishes. Have you tried Swiss chocolate yet? 
Yes, I have. It's one of my favorites. Speaking of ingredients, what's your favorite local ingredient to cook with? My favorite ingredient is Swiss cheese. I love its nutty and sharp flavor, which pairs well with many dishes. Your dishes are beautifully plated. What inspires your plating techniques? I'm inspired by Swiss nature and landscapes, which I try to reflect in my plating by using colors and textures that remind me of the Swiss Alps. That's fascinating. What's the most challenging dish you've ever cooked? The most challenging dish is definitely fondue. It requires the perfect blend of cheese, wine, and the right amount of heat while keeping it from separating. I can imagine. What's your favorite dish on the menu? My favorite dish is our Violoso Buco. It's slow-cooked for several hours and served with a creamy polenta. That sounds delicious. Do you have any advice for aspiring chefs? My advice is to never stop learning, experimenting, and creating. And to always use the freshest, local ingredients. Thank you, Chef B. It was a pleasure getting to know more about Swiss cuisine and your unique cooking techniques. Thank you, A. It was my pleasure to share my passion for Swiss cuisine. Enjoy your meal. Hey, have you ever tried fairy bread before? Nope, never heard of it. What is it? It's a classic Australian snack, made with bread, butter, and sprinkles. Sprinkles on bread? That sounds interesting. Is it sweet? Very sweet. It's a hit with kids at birthday parties. Huh, so it's like a dessert sandwich? Yeah, that's one way to put it. You should try it sometime. I'm not sure. How does the sprinkle stick to the bread? You spread the butter on the bread first, then sprinkle the sprinkles on top. They kind of stick to the butter. Ah, uh, I see. So, is it only popular in Australia? Yeah, it's not really known outside of Australia. Interesting. How do you think it would taste with a different type of bread? Hmm, I've never thought about that. It's usually made with plain white bread. Maybe a sweeter bread could work. Or maybe even a savory bread, like garlic bread with sprinkles on top. Laughs, that's definitely thinking outside the box. But who knows, it could be the next big thing. Laughs, you never know until you try it, right? Exactly. So, are you up for trying some fairy bread now? Sure, why not? Let's give it a shot. Hi B, how's it going? Not too bad, thanks. What brings you to the supermarket office? Just wanted to go over the financial reports and budget with you. Ah, uh, yes. That's what I was hoping to discuss with you. So, have you had a chance to go through the report yet? Yes, I have. I noticed that we had some unexpected expenses this quarter. Yes, unfortunately, we did. But we also managed to increase our revenue. That's good news. Do you think we'll be able to meet our budget goals for the year? With some careful planning, I believe we can. But we may need to make some adjustments to our spending. I agree. We could perhaps reduce some of our marketing expenses. That's a good idea. And we could also look into renegotiating some of our supplier contracts. Definitely. We could also try to increase our sales by offering some promotions. Yes, that's always a good way to attract customers. We should also keep an eye on our inventory and try to avoid overstocking. Right. We don't want to tie up too much cash in inventory. This has been a really helpful discussion, eh? Glad to be of help, B. Let's catch up again in a few weeks to see how we're tracking against our revised budget. Sounds like a plan. Thanks again, eh? Good morning, everyone. I hope you all had a great weekend. Good morning, Professor. Mine was pretty relaxing. How about yours? Not too bad. I finally finished reading a novel I've been working on for months. Oh, what was it about? It's a historical fiction about a famous explorer who discovers a lost city. Sounds interesting. Did you enjoy it? Definitely. I'm always fascinated by stories of adventure and discovery. Speaking of adventure, have you ever gone skydiving? Chuckles, no, I haven't. I'm not sure I have the courage for it. I did it last summer and it was amazing. You should try it sometime. Maybe one day. But for now, I'll stick to exploring through literature. That's a great way to explore without risking your life. Agreed. All right, let's get started on today's lecture. Wow, that was a crazy ride on the bumper boats. I know, right? I had no idea I could swerve like that. Yeah, I was trying to avoid getting wet, but it was impossible. I think getting wet was half the fun. Did you manage to bump into anyone? Actually, I did, but I couldn't tell who it was since we were all wearing helmets. 
Ha ha, that's the best part. It's like a mystery game of who you're hitting. I was surprised at how fast these boats could go. I didn't expect it to be so exciting. Same here. I thought it'd be a slow ride around the pond, but it turned out to be a wild adventure. I'm glad we tried it out. Have you ever done any other crazy rides like this before? Yeah, I've been on a few roller coasters, but this one was definitely unique. It's a good thing we're not too old for these types of rides yet, haha. <laughs> Agreed. It's nice to take a break from the serious stuff and just let loose for a bit. Couldn't agree more. This trip has been a blast so far. Definitely. Let's see what other adventures this amusement park has in store for us. Hey B, how's it going? Not too bad. How about yourself? Can't complain. So what's on the agenda today? Well, I was thinking we could discuss some ways to improve our SEO rankings. Ah, uh, gotcha. Always looking for ways to get ahead, right? Exactly. So, what do you think about focusing on backlinks? Backlinks are important, but we also need to make sure our website is optimized for keywords and has quality content. Good point. But don't forget about social media. We can use that to generate buzz and drive traffic to our site. Yes, I agree. And speaking of driving traffic, have you thought about using PPC advertising? Of course. We could target specific keywords and demographics to really hone in on the right audience. Nice. And we can't forget about mobile optimization. More and more people use their phones to search for things. Absolutely. And let's not forget about site speed and user experience. Google loves sites that load quickly and are easy to navigate. Agreed. And we also need to keep up with changes to search algorithms. Who knows what new factors they'll start factoring in. That's true. It's important to stay on top of the latest trends and make adjustments as needed. Definitely. So, what do you think our top priority should be right now? I think improving our content is a good place to start. We can focus on creating high-quality, informative articles and blog posts. Sounds good to me. Let's get to work. Hey, B. How's it going? Pretty good. How about you? Can't complain. I just wanted to touch base with you about the system problems we've been experiencing. Sure thing. What seems to be the issue? Well, for one, the system seems to be running slower than usual. Plus, I've noticed that some of the applications are crashing unexpectedly. Hmm, that's definitely not good. Have you tried restarting the system? Yeah, I've tried that a few times, but it doesn't seem to be helping. Do you think it could be a hardware issue? It's possible, but let's not jump to conclusions just yet. We should try running some diagnostic tests to narrow down the issue. That's a good idea. Do you think we should contact tech support? Not just yet. Let's gather some more information first so we can provide them with as much detail as possible. Sounds like a plan. On a different note, have you tried that new coffee shop down the street? No, but I've heard good things about it. Want to check it out for lunch? Sure, why not? It's always good to take a break from the screen and get some fresh air. Agreed. And who knows, maybe a change of scenery will help us come up with a solution to the system problem. Hey there. I see you checking out the river. Are you a civil engineer? Yes, I am. I am interested in the river's water supply. Are you the farmer who owns the land here? Yes. I'm one of the local farmers here. Our farms rely on the water from this river. We've been experiencing some problems with our water supply lately. I see. What kind of issues have you been experiencing? We've been having a dry spell recently, and the river's water level has been low. It's been challenging to irrigate our crops. Some sections of the river have been eroded, making it impossible for us to divert the water. That's not good. But, with my expertise, I can assist in creating a plan that will increase the water supply. That would be wonderful. How can we improve the river to improve the water supply? We can build stronger dams to catch the rainwater and reduce the effects of erosion. We can also widen and deepen the river channels to allow more water to flow through. Those sound like great suggestions. What are the steps we need to take to make this happen? We'll need to create a detailed plan, allocate materials and labor, and work closely with the local authorities to ensure that this project is safe for all in the community. Outstanding. We want to keep our farms and our community thriving, and this project will help us do that. Absolutely. Let's work together to make this happen. Howdy, partner. Welcome to Darwin. Are you enjoying your stay so far? Hi there. Thank you for the warm welcome. Yes, I am. I love exploring new cultures. 
that's great to hear. Darwin is a melting pot of different cultures. You should try some of our local specialties. Sure, I would love to. What do you recommend? You can't go wrong with some crocodile meat or barramundi fish. They're some of our most famous dishes. Wow, I've never tried crocodile before. I'm excited to taste it. Don't worry, it's not as scary as it seems. Have you been to any local attractions yet? Yes, I went to the Mendel Beach Sunset Market. It was amazing. That's one of our best outdoor markets. Did you get to try some of the food there? Yes, I had some barbecue shrimp and it was delicious. The sunset was stunning too. I'm glad you enjoyed it. There's also the Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair that showcases some amazing works of art. Sounds interesting. I will definitely check that out. And if you're looking for some adventure, you can go on a crocodile cruise or explore the national parks. Oh, I will definitely take note of that. I love outdoor activities too. Darwin has so much to offer, and I hope you get to experience everything it has to offer. Thank you for the recommendations and for being such a helpful assistant. Good morning, Nurse B. How are you doing today? Good morning, Doctor. I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. So what brings you here today? Just a routine checkup. I have to set a good example for our patients. Haha, <laughs> good point. Let's get started then. How's your blood pressure looking? It's a little high, but I blame the coffee I had this morning. Sorry about that. No worries. Just make sure to cut back on caffeine, especially before appointments. How about your cholesterol levels? Everything is in the normal range. I've been watching my diet and exercising regularly. That's great to hear. And how's your mental health? Oh, I've been feeling a little stressed lately with all the workload, but I'm coping with it. Well, make sure to take some time for yourself and unwind when you can. That's good advice, thank you. How about you, Dr. A? How's your health been? I've been doing well, thanks for asking. I've been trying to stay active by running and biking in my free time. That's great to hear. It's important for us healthcare professionals to take care of ourselves as well. Absolutely. And speaking of caring for ourselves, let's go grab some lunch after this. My treat. Ah, thank you. I was actually thinking the same thing. How about we go try that new sushi place down the street? Sounds perfect. Let's finish up here and head out. Hi there. My name is John, and I'm going to be your diving instructor today. What's your name? Hi John, my name is Pete. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Pete. Are you excited to go diving in the Great Barrier Reef? Yes, I'm really excited. I've been wanting to go diving here for years. That's great to hear. Have you ever been diving anywhere else before? No, this is my first time diving. Don't worry, you're in good hands. We'll start with some basic training before we hit the water. Sounds good to me. What do I need to know? First, we need to make sure you know how to use all of your diving equipment properly. We'll also go over some hand signals so we can communicate underwater. Got it. What else do I need to do? We'll work on some breathing exercises to make sure you're comfortable and relaxed underwater. And we'll practice ascending and descending safely. I think I can handle that. Great. Let's get suited up and head to the water. Woohoo, let's go. Okay, Pete. We're all set. Let's enter the water and start our descent. Wow, the water is so clear. Yes, it's an amazing sight. Keep a lookout for some different types of fish as we go deeper. Look, a clownfish. Just like in the movie. That's right, Pete. And over there, you'll see a school of barracuda. This is incredible. I'm so glad I decided to go diving. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself, Pete. Let's head back up to the surface now. Okay, but can we stay down a little bit longer? Sure thing. We can stay for a couple more minutes. Yay! All right, Pete, time to head back to the boat. Did you have a good time? Absolutely. I'm hooked on diving now. Thanks for being a great instructor. You're welcome, Pete. It was my pleasure. Safe travels. Hey B, have you heard about the new back-end engineer we just hired? He's pretty talented. Oh really? Well that's great news, especially for our security experts. We need all the help we can get in protecting sensitive financial data. Yeah, he's been chatting me up about all sorts of new security measures he wants to implement. He seems really passionate about it. That's exactly what we need. 
a passionate engineer who takes security seriously. It's not enough to just lock everything up behind a firewall anymore. Totally agree. Especially with all the recent news about data breaches and hacking attempts. It's enough to make a person paranoid. Haha, uh -huh, no need to be paranoid. Just need to be extra cautious and vigilant. And with this new backend engineer, I'm feeling pretty good about our ability to protect our clients' financial transactions. Yeah, I think we're in good hands. Plus, we have you here to handle all the cybersecurity stuff. Last, that's right. The knight in shining armor, here to save the day. But seriously, thanks for all your hard work. We couldn't do it without you. Smiles anytime, eh? Hey. It's all for the sake of keeping our financial data safe and secure. Hi there. You seem lost in thought. Everything all right? Oh, hey. Just pondering about the universe and its mysteries. I know what you mean. I study astronomy and there's always something new to discover. That's fascinating. I'm a physicist myself, so we share a similar interest. Definitely. Actually, physics and astronomy have a strong relationship. After all, the laws of physics govern the behavior of the universe. That's true. I think astronomy often relies on physics to explain phenomena like gravitational waves or black holes. And vice versa. Physics also benefits from astronomical observations, like using pulsars to test Einstein's theory of general relativity. Absolutely. It's amazing how interconnected the two fields are. I totally agree. Do you have a favorite astronomical phenomenon to study? Hmm, that's a tough one. Probably dark matter. It's still so mysterious and we've barely scratched the surface of understanding it. Yes, dark matter is definitely an enigma. I'm personally fascinated by exoplanets, planets outside our solar system. Oh, me too. It's exciting to think about the possibility of life on other planets. Exactly. The possibilities are endless when it comes to the universe. It's always full of surprises. That's what makes these fields so exciting to study. You never know what you'll discover next. Well said. I think we'll both have plenty to keep us busy for a long time. Definitely. It was great talking to another science enthusiast. We should do this more often. Hey B, how's it going? Ready for some arcade action? Hey A, I am always ready for some gaming. Which game are we playing today? Let's play Bomberman, I am pretty good at it. Oh, I haven't played that in a while, but I am always up for a good challenge. Let's do it. Sounds great. You better watch out though, my Bomberman skills are sharp. Haha, ha, we will see about that. Let's get started. Alright, here we go, places bomb on screen. Moves away from bomb and retaliates with own bomb. Ha, huh, you missed me with that one. That's what you think. Traps A in corner with bombs. Oh no, I am stuck. Laughs looks like you fell right into my trap. Alright, you got me that time. Let's play another round and see who comes out on top. Sounds like a plan, let's go. Places bomb near power-up. Avoids bomb and collects power-up. Hey, that was sneaky. How did you do that? Laughs it's all about strategy, my friend. Well, I have to give you credit for that move. You may have won this round, but I'll be back for a rematch. Haha, <laughs> bring it on. Good morning, B. How are you feeling today? I am feeling great, thank you for asking. How about you, Professor? I am doing fine too. So, have you made any progress on the research project we discussed last week? Yes, I did. I have found some interesting data that could support our hypothesis. That's wonderful. Could you share some of the findings with me? Sure, based on the initial analysis, it seems like our hypothesis about the impact of sunlight on plant growth is somewhat accurate. That is very interesting indeed. Have you considered any potential challenges or limitations to this study? Yes, I have. We might need to take into account the effects of soil composition and watering frequency, for example. That's a valid point. How about we include those factors as control variables in our next set of experiments? That sounds good to me, Professor. I will start working on refining the experimental design. Excellent. Don't forget to document everything carefully so we can keep track of the results and use them for future reference. I won't, Professor. Thank you for your guidance and support. You're welcome, B. Keep up the good work and let me know if you need any assistance along the way. I will, Professor. Have a great day. You too, B. See you soon. Hey B, I heard you're a cloud security engineer. Can you teach me how to keep our cloud services safe and stable? 
Of course, hey. It's my specialty. What do you want to know first? Hmm, let's start with basic security measures. I know we need strong passwords, but is there more to it? Absolutely. We should also enable two-factor authentication and limit access to only those who need it. Got it. What about unexpected incidents, like cyber attacks or natural disasters? We need to have a disaster recovery plan in place and regularly test it. And for cyber attacks, we must stay vigilant and update our security protocols. That sounds like a lot of work. It is, but it's worth it to keep our data and system safe. Plus, I find it fun to stay up to date on the latest security trends. You're such a nerd, B. Guilty as charged. But hey, it pays off in the end. Speaking of paying off, how do we make sure our cloud services stay stable and reliable? We need to regularly monitor performance and update our infrastructure as needed. And of course, have a solid backup plan. Backup plan, got it. But what if something still goes wrong? Well, as with any technology, there's always a margin of error. But with proper planning and maintenance, we can minimize the risk and quickly resolve any issues that arise. That's reassuring. Thanks for all the tips, B. I feel more confident in our cloud security and stability now. Anytime, A. And don't forget to always stay curious and willing to learn more. The cloud industry is constantly evolving, so we need to stay on top of our game. Good morning. Can I help you find anything today? Hi, yes please. I'm looking for a new pair of sneakers. Sure, we have a great selection of sneakers. What type of shoes are you interested in? I'm looking for something comfortable for everyday wear. I recommend these sneakers. They have memory foam soles and the fabric is breathable. These look perfect. Do you have them in my size? Let me check for you. Yes, we have them in a size 8. Great, I'll take them. Can you show me where the checkout is? Of course, it's just over there. Is there anything else I can help you with? Actually, yes. Do you have any hats or sunglasses that would match these sneakers? Let me see. We have some great baseball caps in a similar color scheme. And these sunglasses would look great with them. Perfect, I'll take them both. Thank you for your help. No problem at all. Enjoy your new gear and have a great day. Hey B. How's it going? Doing well, thanks for asking. How about you? Not too shabby. Just trying to figure out ways to improve our app security. Ah, security is always an important topic. What do you have in mind? I was thinking maybe we could add a multi-factor authentication to our login process. That's a good idea. We could also implement encryption for sensitive information. Definitely. And maybe we could run more frequent vulnerability scans. Yes, and we could also provide user education on safe browsing habits and password management. Great point. Do you also think we should limit the amount of data we collect from users? Absolutely. We should only collect what's necessary for the app to function. That's true. What about third-party integrations? Should we limit those as well? It depends. We should thoroughly vet any third-party integrations and ensure they have proper security measures in place. Good point. What do you think about using biometric authentication? It's a great option, but we should also provide a traditional login for those who don't have biometric capabilities on their device. Right, that makes sense. Do you have any other ideas we could implement? We could also run regular security awareness training for the whole team to keep security top of mind. That's an excellent idea. I think we really need to be proactive about security to protect our users and our company. Absolutely. Security should always be a top priority in our development process. Thanks for all your input. Together, with these measures, we can provide a safer user experience. Anytime. It's always great to discuss security with a fellow security-minded developer. Hey B, do you play volleyball? Oh no. I'm terrible at it. But I love watching it. Same here, it's so intense. Who do you think will win this game? I'm thinking it's going to be a close game. Both teams are equally good. You're right. I can't wait to see who the winner is. Who's your favorite player on the team you're rooting for? Definitely the captain. She's a beast on the court. Yeah, she's really good. But personally, I think the setter is crucial. Good point. Without a good setter, it's hard for the team to perform well. They're all great players. I'm sure they'll make it a thrilling match. Hey, did you see that spike just now? That was insane. And that block. This game is getting more and more exciting every minute. I know, right. 
Both teams are putting up a good fight. Looks like the game is almost over. Who do you think will take the win? I'm hoping for a tiebreaker, but if I had to choose, I'd say the home team will come out on top. We'll see about that. The away team is not giving up without a fight. Oh no, they made a mistake. The home team just scored the winning point. Congrats to the home team. That was a great game. Can't wait to come back for another match. Hey B, have you ever tried Picanha before? Nope, I haven't. What is it? It's a type of Brazilian beef cut that's known for its tenderness and flavor. I tried it at a Brazilian steakhouse, and it was amazing. That sounds quite interesting. Is it a popular dish in Brazil? Yes, it is. It's actually one of the most popular cuts of meat in Brazil. People grill it with salt, and the result is amazing. Wow, that sounds so good. Do you know any good place in town where we can try this? I've heard that there's a great Brazilian restaurant nearby that serves picanha. It's called Boi na Brasa, which means beef on the grill. Shall we give it a try? Sounds like a plan. Let's go there tomorrow for lunch. Great. I hope you'll like it. I'm sure you will. I'm looking forward to it. By the way, do you know how to cook picanha? Well, I've never tried cooking it myself, but I heard that it's quite simple. You just need to season it with salt, and then grill it to a perfect medium rare. Easy enough, right? That sounds like something I could try at home. Thanks for the tip. No problem. Just make sure you get a good quality cut of meat from the butcher. I will definitely keep that in mind. Thanks for introducing me to Picana, A. My pleasure, B. I'm always happy to share my love for food with my friends. Hi there, I was wondering if I could exchange these pants for a smaller size? Of course. What size are you looking for? I think I need a size medium instead of large, they're a bit loose on me. Not a problem at all. Did you happen to find anything else you'd like to purchase in exchange? Actually, I saw this shirt on my way in that I really liked. Do you have it in my size? Yes, we do. Let me grab that for you while you try on the pants. Great, thanks so much. I'm liking the customer service here. We take pride in ensuring customer satisfaction. How are the pants fitting now? Much better, thank you. And this shirt is perfect too. How much do I owe? The pants you return cover the cost of the shirt. You don't need to pay anything extra. Wow, that's very generous of you. I really appreciate it. It's all part of making sure our customers have a great experience. Anything else I can help you with today? No, that's it. Thank you again for your help. Not a problem at all. Have a wonderful day. Good morning. I'm the photographer for today. Nice to meet you. Good morning. Nice to meet you too. My name is B and I am your translator for the day. Wonderful. So, where would you like to begin? We have a lot of different areas of the temple we can use for your photos. I think the gate over there would be a great spot to start. It's so iconic. Sounds perfect. Let's go. Oh, and be sure to smile, B. You're going to be in a lot of these photos too. Oh, of course. I'll do my best. All right, perfect. Just stand there and look up towards the gate. Great. Beautiful smile, B. Thank you. You're really good at making people feel comfortable during photo shoots. Ah, thank you. It's all part of the job. Now let's go to the main hall area. Wow, look at this view. I'm so glad we chose this place for the photo shoot. Me too. Okay, now let's try a couple serious shots. Look off into the distance, B. Like this? Yes, perfect. Great job. Thank you. You know, you're a really talented photographer. That means a lot coming from you, B. You're a great translator and really make my job easier. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. Hey, do you think we can take a few photos near that koi pond? Absolutely. Let's go. I've got some great ideas for shots down there. This has been such a fun photo shoot. Thank you for making it such a great experience, A. You're welcome, B. It was a pleasure working with you. I think we've got some fantastic shots here. Hey there, B. How's it going? As an AI engineer, I'm really excited to be working with a natural language processing expert like yourself. Hey, A. I'm doing great, thanks. It's awesome to be working with you, too. So, what brings you to the world of natural language processing? I've been tasked with improving our company's customer service chatbot. 
I feel like there's so much potential for our chatbot to be more efficient and personalized when communicating with our customers. That's a great initiative. NLP can certainly help with that. Have you thought about sentiment analysis and entity recognition? Yes, I've looked into those areas. But I'm also curious about chatbot personality and tone of voice. Do you think those are important factors? Definitely. A chatbot that's able to convey empathy and positivity often leads to better customer satisfaction scores. We should also aim to write chatbot conversations that are engaging and authentic. Right. And since our company has a diverse group of customers, we need to ensure that our chatbot understands and is able to communicate in multiple languages. Do you have any suggestions on how we can accomplish that? Yes, there are plenty of natural language processing techniques and tools that can help us out. Specifically, I recommend focusing on language detection and machine translation. Okay, that sounds like a good starting point. But what about user intent? How can we make sure our chatbot understands what the customers are trying to ask and provide the right answer? Intents can indeed be tricky to identify accurately. One option is to develop predefined intents that cover common customer scenarios. Then, we can train our chatbot to recognize and respond to these scenarios accurately. That makes sense. Also, how can we ensure that our chatbot keeps learning and improving over time? We can use machine learning models to regularly train and fine-tune our chatbot's natural language processing abilities. This enables our chatbot to learn from its mistakes and improve upon them. Awesome. Thanks for your help, B. I'm really excited to implement these natural language processing techniques and see how our chatbot improves. My pleasure, A. I'm confident that with the right techniques and tools, we can create a chatbot that provides an exceptional customer experience. Hey there, B. How's it going today? It's going pretty well, thanks. How about you? I'm doing great, thanks. I wanted to talk to you about some database management stuff. Sure, what's up? Well, I'm trying to figure out the best way to store and manage all this data we've been collecting. Ah, uh, yeah. That can be a bit of a tricky problem. Definitely. Right now we've just been throwing everything in one big table, but that's starting to get out of hand. Yeah, that can make it tough to find the data you're looking for. Exactly. So I was thinking we could split things up into different tables based on the type of data and then use foreign keys to link them together. Hmm, that's a good idea. We could use something like MySQL or PostgreSQL for that, right? Yeah, either of those should work well. Do you have a preference? I've worked with both, but I think I like PostgreSQL a bit better. Okay, sounds good. And then we could use some kind of ORM like SQL Alchemy to make it easier to work with the data. Definitely. And we'll want to make sure we've got some good indexing in place, too. Yeah, that'll be critical for performance. But I think if we do all that, we should be in pretty good shape. Agreed. And if we run into any snags, we can always ask some of the other devs for help. Perfect. Thanks for chatting about this with me, B. No problem. Happy to help. Hi there, B. How's everything going with the DevOps side of things? Hey, hey. Everything's going pretty well so far. We're just trying to find new ways to streamline development and IT operations. That's great to hear. I was thinking maybe we can start implementing some automation tools to help with that. Automation tools? That's a good idea. Which do you have in mind? Well, I was thinking about using some continuous integration and delivery tools. Ah, uh, I see. You mean tools like Jenkins and Docker? Exactly. They could help us automate the build, test, and deployment processes. Yeah, that could definitely save us some time and reduce errors. And we could even use some configuration management tools like Ansible and Chef to manage infrastructure. Nice. We definitely need better infrastructure management. I think we could also benefit from using some monitoring tools like Nagios and Splunk. Yes, monitoring tools are important to ensure the smooth running of the system. What do you think about incorporating machine learning algorithms for predicting IT issues? Wow, that sounds impressive. It might be a bit advanced for us, but definitely something we could consider in the future. Sure, it's always good to keep innovating. Speaking of innovation, what do you think about DevOps culture? I think it's vital for creating a more collaborative and communicative work environment. Absolutely. It helps to break down barriers between dev and ops and create a shared responsibility for the success of the project. And it allows us to be more agile in responding to changes and delivering value to customers. That's right. And with cloud computing, we can even scale up our infrastructure more easily and reduce costs. Yes, cloud is definitely a game changer. 
We'll need to make sure we have the right cloud architecture in place though. Of course, but we can always use architecture frameworks like TOGAF to ensure we're following best practices. Sounds good. Overall, I'm excited to see what we can achieve with DevOps. Me too. Let's keep up the good work and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Hey, B. Have you ever thought about how we can design a beautiful and user-friendly e-commerce website? Of course, A. As a UI designer, I always think about how to make user experience simple and enjoyable. That's great to hear. As a front-end developer, I want to make sure the website is functional, but I definitely need your help to make it look good. Don't worry, A. We can work together to come up with a great design that's both visually stunning and easy to navigate. Awesome. Do you have any ideas in mind for the overall look and feel? I was thinking of using a minimalist design with a bright color scheme. We could also incorporate some fun and unique graphics to make the website stand out. Sounds great. How about the layout? Do you want to use a traditional grid system or something more dynamic? Personally, I prefer using a grid system because it ensures everything is organized and easy to find. But we could also incorporate some unconventional design elements to keep it interesting. I like that idea. What about the checkout process? Do you have any suggestions for making it as user-friendly as possible? We should definitely simplify the process by eliminating unnecessary steps and making sure the checkout button is easy to find. We could also incorporate trust badges to increase customer confidence. Agreed. Overall, I think this website will be a great success with our combined efforts. Thanks for being a great teammate, B. No problem, A. It's always a pleasure working with you. Let's make this website the best it can be. Good evening. Welcome to our hotel. How may I assist you? Hi there. I'm here for the Festival of Jazz in the French Quarter. I'm so excited about it. Oh, that's great. You've come to the right place. Our hotel is located just a few blocks away from the festival. That's perfect. Do you have any recommendations for restaurants or bars to go to after the festival? Absolutely. The French Quarter is full of great options. If you want to hear some more jazz, you should check out Preservation Hall. It's one of the most famous jazz venues in the city. Oh, thanks for the recommendation. I'll definitely check it out. What can you tell me about the jazz festival? The festival celebrates music and culture, featuring some of the biggest names in jazz. The festival is well known for its lively atmosphere and great food. Sounds fantastic. I can't wait to try some of the local food. What else can you recommend? You should also take a stroll around the French market, which has a wide range of handmade crafts, antiques, and delicious food. That sounds lovely. I'll definitely make time for that. Is there anything else I should know about the festival? Yes, make sure you bring comfortable shoes because the venues are spread out, and if you want to get close to the stage, you may need to stand for a while. But I'm sure you'll love it. Thanks for the heads up. I'm really excited about the whole experience. I'm glad to hear that. If you need anything else during your stay, don't hesitate to contact us. I hope you enjoy the jazz festival and your time here in the French Quarter. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Hey there, Captain B. Checking up on the fishing boat today? Yes, I am. I hear there's a new maintenance engineer in town. That's you, right? Yes, I am. Pleasure to meet you. So, how's the boat doing? She's all right, but I want to make sure she stays in top shape. Any advice on how I can do that? Regular inspections are key, especially on the engine and moving parts. Plus, make sure to check for any leaks or cracks in the hull. Got it. What about the equipment? Like fishing lines and nets? Keep them clean and dry, and inspect them regularly for any signs of wear and tear. And don't forget to lubricate the reels to keep them in good condition. Lubricate the reels? Sounds like a good idea. Do you recommend any particular type of oil? Yes, I suggest using a marine-grade oil. It's specially formulated to withstand the conditions at sea. Thanks for the tip. Speaking of sea conditions, any suggestions for how to deal with corrosion from salt water? Keep the boat clean and regularly rinse it with fresh water to prevent salt buildup. And if you do find signs of corrosion, treat it immediately to prevent it from spreading. Great advice. Thanks for your help, eh? No problem. Happy to help keep the fishing boat in top shape. And if you have any other concerns or questions, don't hesitate to give me a call. Dad, could we go to the electronics store today? I want to buy a Nintendo Switch. Of course, son. I think that's a great idea. Do you have enough money saved up for it? Yes, I saved up enough. 
I can't wait to play my favorite video games. Great, let's head to the store now. Hmm, which one is the Nintendo Switch? It's that one over there, on the shelf. I heard it's really popular. Oh, yes, I see it now. Wait a second, the label says Cisco Switch? What? That can't be right. What's a Cisco Switch? Well, it's not exactly the same thing as a Nintendo Switch. This one is a device that helps to connect multiple networks together. Oh no. That's not what I wanted. I wanted the one that plays games. Haha, uh -huh, I figured that. I just wanted to make sure. Let's keep looking for the Nintendo Switch. Thank goodness. I was starting to worry there. Hey, look, there it is. And it comes with a free game too. That's great, son. I'm glad we found it. Let's go ahead and buy it. Thank you, Dad. You're the best. No problem, son. Seeing you happy makes me happy. Hi, B. How's it going? Have you heard about the latest project we're working on? Hey, A. It's going pretty well, thanks. Yes, I have. In fact, I was just looking over the testing plan, and I noticed that we don't have full test coverage yet. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's been a challenge figuring out how to achieve 100% test coverage. Well, I have an idea. We could start with creating a list of all the requirements of the software and then create test cases for each one. This would ensure that we have all key functionalities covered. That sounds like a great idea. Once we have the test cases created, we can also use a code coverage tool to measure how much of the code base is being tested. Absolutely. And we could also utilize automation testing to ensure that all test cases are executed on a regular basis. Automation testing is an excellent approach, but let's make sure our test cases are understandable and maintainable by the team. Yes, definitely. We can also conduct exploratory testing to uncover any issues that weren't foreseen in the test plan. I agree that it's important to think outside the box. What do you think about utilizing a beta test group to capture feedback before the release? That could be useful. And let's not forget about performance testing and compatibility testing with various operating systems, devices, and browsers. Good point, B. It's important to test under different environments. What about security testing? We cannot forget about security testing. We should use penetration testing and vulnerability scanning to identify the potential security issues of the system. Agreed. And it's always a good idea to learn from our past experiences and improve our testing process. That's right, A. We can always take feedback from the previous projects and evaluate what worked well and what can be improved. This has been a helpful discussion. I think we have a solid approach towards achieving full test coverage. I think so too. It's always good to collaborate and come up with innovative ideas to deliver high-quality software. Welcome to our hotel in Osaka. How can I assist you today? Hello. I'm one of the customer service representatives. How may I help you? Our hotel offers a range of services, from restaurants to spa treatments. What are you interested in? I have a family of four visiting and they're looking for sites to see in the area. Do you have any recommendations? Of course. The Osaka Castle and the Tsutenkaku Tower are both popular tourist destinations here in Osaka. Sounds great. I'll definitely recommend those to them. What about dining options? We have a variety of restaurants in the hotel that offer Japanese, Western, and Chinese cuisine. If they're looking for something more local, there are also many great sushi places in the area. Yum, I love sushi. I'll let them know. What else can you suggest? We have a beautiful rooftop bar that overlooks the city. It's a great place to relax and enjoy a drink after a day of sightseeing. Oh, that sounds lovely. I'll make sure to suggest that to them as well. Great, let me know if there's anything else I can help you with. Will do, thank you for your help. Your hospitality is much appreciated. It's my pleasure. I'm glad to be of service to you and your guests. Have a wonderful day.